absolute monster. Yeah, he was a beast, bro. He was, he was a monster. A hello, 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 and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I am your host, Nicholas Playlog. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle, and today... We're going to be breaking down the top five third baseman in the MLB going into the 2021 season. But before we get into that, make sure to hit that notification button and subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out all of our other platforms in the description down below. All right. Top five third baseman. That's the video. That's the video. Mm -hmm. But before we get going, I know you wanted to mention just one person that maybe just 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 didn't get in the list quite because this category mm -hmm. is filled with a lot of talent there was a lot of people man when i pulled this up i you know because we always start and we're looking at you know the mlb rankings the you know top third baseman all these guys there is a lot of players one guy for me who i need to make a very honorable mention to i have a little bit of bias associated with him because <laughs> i've I've owned him in fantasy, you know, yeah. several years in a row now. You dropped him in fantasy. I made a horrible, horrible error. I made a horrible, horrible error. <laughs> in 2019, I dropped him after six weeks, and then he went on to, like, be a lead as fuck. <laughs> um, the guy that we're talking about is Raphael Devers, the basically future of the Boston Red Sox right now. This guy is going to be good. He is already really good. Um, and I think, you know, both of us can agree that mm -hmm. for the next 10 years, we're going to see some really good stuff come out of this kid. It's just when we're looking at him in relation to some of these other guys, we haven't had enough of a sample size yet to put him on the list. But that yeah. 2019 year, though, it was that really 2019 great. year. You know, that that's one of the probably one of the better. Like he was one of the best third baseman in 2019. But. He's only played four seasons, and yeah. that's the that's the difference. All these guys in the top five list are have a lot of history underneath their belt and a lot of good performances. So. And and that's the thing, you know, like he had like that 2019 year. Like if he had one more similar to that, I think he's on this list. Yeah, I think he's on this list. Yeah. But because we only had that one, it's like we can't we can't really put him there. And he, in 2020, like granted, he actually did well. Yeah. Uh, you know, like not as good as the 2019, but the guy still had uh, 43 RBIs in 60 games, you know, hit for 263 average with a 483 slugging, like still did very well. Yeah. Um, but we just need a little bit more from him. So yeah. keep working, Rafael Devers. I expect him to be in this list if we were to do this again, probably in a year. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see. And actually, you know, I was thinking who would be the guy that would most likely be kicked out if they didn't perform that well. Mm. And it could be our number five man coming into the number five spot is Alex Bregman from the Houston Astros. Mm -hmm. Again, we all know the cheating scandal yep. and we saw coming into 2020, you know, what are they going to, or we, we thought coming into 2020, what are they going to do? What are they going to do now that this, uh, this whole cheating scandal's up and into the surface? Well, uh, he didn't do that great. He only no, he hit did two, pretty shit. He only hit 242, and his production was really horrible. Not not like Alex Bregman at all. Only hitting no. six home runs, 22 RBIs, 19 runs, 60 game season. However, of course, um, but yeah, he but his career though is what really brings him into this list. Well, he's like the difference for me with him and Devers is that instead of having one year of elite, Bregman does have two. Exactly. Uh, like his 2018 and his 2019 were stellar. Like in 2019, he was, art, like he did not win MVP, but he very easily could have, you know? Mm -hmm. he, he did crazy stuff there, and uh, he does have a career OPS of 902. Yeah. So, I mean, he's just got a little bit more on Devers, I think, and that's why he's ahead for yeah. us. That, like, <laughs> you, you said OPS, like how he's a great OPS career number. Mm -hmm. 2019, this this, bl this blows my mind. His OPS was 1.015. That yeah. is unreal. Anytime yeah. you get into that one with OPS, yeah. Yeah, you you can lock yourself down you for are, an MVP vote. You are that year. a absolute <laughs> game changer, and yeah, he ha he suffered this season. Although I I noticed too, like he only had 153 at bats. You know, Devers had 232, and everyone else on this list also had far more than Alex Bregman. So if I remember correctly, he was dealing with something. There was yeah. some sort of problem that we had injury. Yeah, he, he was getting injured, and um, yeah, and and when he came back, he just wasn't himself, mm -hmm. and. 
for throughout this whole list, I also I wanted to mention like I kind of like racked up some accolades from all these people, whether it be Silver Sluggers, Golden Gloves, All Star appearances. Sure, yeah. And you know he's got two All Star appearances, one 2018, Silver Slugger, 2019. 2018, 2019, mm-hmm. and he's finished second in the MVP, MVP voting at least once. So. Yeah, and that was 2019. So. so at 26 years old with five seasons in the belt, maybe he can make a bounce back. I wouldn't be shocked if oh, he did. No. I, I, I um, really think that he will. Like, let's really face it. So again, too. like this 2020 season, I I cannot stress it enough. Like, we've seen so many elite guys that didn't have great, crazy career years, you know? Yeah. We also saw DJ LeMayhew hit, like, what, like 360 or something? <laughs> like, that's not a regular season thing. You yeah. Know? Like, this is shortened season stuff, and Alex Bregman will bounce back. And that is why he is at our number five spot for the top five third baseman. And coming in. Just edging him out, though. (laughs) Edging him out is is a guy who didn't do too hot in 2019, did really hot in 2018, and did really hot in 2020. Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez, yeah. I, um, I like this guy a lot because he's one of those guys that, like, when he's on and healthy, he can slug... A crazy crap load, and he can also steal bases. Yeah, that's part of his game, and it's kind of crazy, dude, because he's a big boy. Yeah. Like you look at him, he's like, damn, that, that's a big boy. That's but a he, big ass. But boy. he's a fast. But boy. he is a fast, <laughs> big and ass he's a boy. smart boy. Yeah, he's got he's got the brains on him <laughs> you know? too, you know. But I, I just like you see him at the plate, and I'm like, I would not expect you to be a stealing threat, but he very much is so. And you know, out of everyone that we have on this list, like. He's the only guy that really adds that element to his game. Yeah. Maybe it's something to do with Cleveland, bro. They got Lindor stealing. They got Ramirez yeah, stealing. Yeah. Like, they're just, they're a stealing crew. But yeah, yeah. He's good. No, he's really good. And, like, his 2020 year was probably one of the best uh, out of all the third basemen. Yeah. Uh, he led yes. in a lot of categories. He led in, sl- out of third baseman. he led in slugging. He led in OPS. He led in home runs. He led in runs scored. He was second in RBIs, second in average, and second in on-base percentage. So this guy was an absolute monster. Yeah, he was a beast, bro. He was, he was a monster. A and his no ab- And then you look at his career, and he's been doing it. Like you said, he's been every other year. He's been kind of like a really great like breakout burst year. Mm-hmm. You know, he has three silver sluggers, two all-star appearances, third in MVP voting twice, mm-hmm. and then and also second in MVP once. So like he he hasn't won an MVP, but like he could be very close to winning an MVP. I really think that he would be higher on this list had he not had a down year in 2019. Mm-hmm. If that and and it was a down year as far as his career stats go, but if he had you know remained at like e- like it could even be a little bit less than this level, but if he'd remained close to this level, then I would have to put him higher on yeah. this list. And the only reason he's at number four is because of that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I, he I believe he started the year off with a bit of an injury and then he was slow to begin. 2019? 2019. Um, I don't think so, actually. No? I, or was, I, that, was that uh, Rami- not Ramirez? Um, Lindor. Was that Lindor? That was Lindor. That was Lindor, that was Lindor. yeah. yeah. I, I do remember I, he may have had an injury throughout yeah. the season. I'm not sure. But I do remember him, like... I, I remember this because of fantasy, because mm-hmm. you know, he was the big, like, oh my God, we all busted really bad yeah, on this guy, yeah, yeah. Um, like, and he is not returning value, and just never never really did for where you had to draft him fantasy-wise. Still yeah. a decent MLB player. Good. And I remember, it cut, like, at the end of 2019 is when he started picking it up, yeah, and then, yeah, he, you know, yeah. he continued. It was, to- it was only that last, like, month and a half, and it was like okay, like this is kind of the Ramirez that we thought yeah. that we were going to get. It was just a little bit too late. Maybe you know, he's just good. At, maybe he's just good in like August, September months. Potentially. Because <laughs> he did really good in these August I will and say, uh, and this is something that I've told you uh, that I've noticed, um, like for Devers, mm-hmm. he is a slow starter. Yeah. He is a slow starter and we've seen that. And then it's like, you know, he, once he gets like six weeks into the season, it's like, holy shit. Like we are looking at a different player right yeah. now. Like this this guy is on another level. Yeah, but yeah, it takes him takes him a little while to warm up. So, yeah. but he's good though. Jose Ramirez, twenty eight years old, number four on the list. Definitely a guy that I would consider drafting in fantasy. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. And I definitely want him on my MLB team. Definitely another guy that I want on the MLB team gets paid a lot of money. Uh, his name coming in at number three is the man Manny Machado. Manny Machado. It is crazy to think that Manny Machado's had nine seasons at 28 years old. Yeah, dude. He's been like, around for like way a, a long time. It's like so long. But it's bro. like you're still 28, you still know? 
a lot of time. So he's still got lots of time to build up that Hall of Fame ballot, you know, maybe he's potentially. A, he's really in that same conversation as, uh, like, maybe not talent wise, mm. maybe talent wise, mm. but like, you know, of like Bryce Harper and Mike Trout. It's like these guys mm. have been elite for so long yes. that it's like. Aren't you retiring soon? Yeah. And it's like, wait, no, 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 no. They're only like 27, 28. Yeah, they're, like they, they're just getting into their prime yeah. right now. Yeah, And, and like, maybe so is Manny freaking Machado. Literally, after signing that big contract, he's going to be around for a while. And he's going to still do Manny Machado things. He had a great bounce back year this year. Bounce back for Manny Machado, of course. Mm -hmm. He hit 304 in the shortened season. That led all of third baseman. And he also led all third baseman in RBI with 47. And... You know, Manny Machado, I never could forget him in Baltimore, how great with the glove he is. And he also has two gold gloves yeah, under does, his belt. does have two gold gloves. He's got four all-stars. He's got a great career, like, expected batting average of 284. That's mm. really good. Um, yeah, I mean, realistically, Manny Machado has been great for his whole career. He's got He's had a little bit of peaks and valleys. But last year was phenomenal, and, yeah. and realistically, when we're talking about a guy who's going to come into 2021, who's going to be a top-tier third baseman, I think Manny Machado is going to be elite on that Padres team, yeah. and, and that that is part of it. You know, It's like the makeup of that squad, the people that are around him, the winning mentality that they have right now, I think it's going to contribute to Manny Machado being an absolute stud yes. next season for yes. those for those guys. And, and like like all these third basemen have are surrounded by really great players, right? And and that's what that's what you know that's going to be a topic that's going to come up later. I know that's like what are the surrounding elements and factors of a player that's going to make them great? And when Manny Machado began his career in San Diego last year uh, in 2019. He was still trying to like figure everything out. Like, you know, for Tatis Jr. was coming up. He was trying to figure everything out. But now coming into his sophomore year, Tatis, uh, and I guess Machado's sophomore year in San Diego, mm -hmm. they really started clicking. It takes so, a while to, you know, you know I, I always am skeptical about how players do in their in their first year with a new team, with a new system, with a new coach, with a new anything. Yeah. And it takes a while to get adjusted, you know, and, and we're seeing that now. Like, Machado is fucking adjusted. Unless you're Josh Donaldson and gets an MVP the first year you, you're in Toronto, then that's... That's different. Yeah, not not everyone, not everyone. <laughs> but uh, that was that. Was, I mean, we were all shocked. That I, I like this guy. I didn't expect much. I expect him to be good, but like MVP, not that good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I love Manny Machado. I got him in fantasy, so I'm happy he's there. Who you got at number two, though? Number two. Who you got this at is number what, two? Uh, one of our, one of our uh, graphic men, Pat, has this guy in fantasy. He did a uh, bit of a reach for him, but it's looking like it's paying off. Looking like it's paying off, for uh, sure. And that man is Anthony Rendon at the number two spot. Yeah, man. Eight seasons at 30 years old. Only one all-star appearance, and that was his 2019 year, where his OPS was 1.010. Well, it, it really was, uh, like, you know, Unreal. you saw, he, uh, I was looking at his career stuff, and it, it has been interesting, like, it's kind of his whole career has been a bit of an upward trend, yeah. you know, like, not like a steep, steep upward trend, but it's been like a slow grind, and it, and it was like in 2019, for him, everything came together as a baseball player and we just saw a massive jump in like some of the stuff that he'd yeah. done because for his whole career he was kind of looking like all right this is a really this is a really solid guy you know a guy who can give me like 80 rbis and 80 runs a year he's not going to be the star but he's going to help me out. And then in 2019, he became the star. I think we, um, like, you definitely agree with you. In 2019, he became the star. But also, like, you look at 2017 and 2018, he still hit over 300. Oh, his and, hitting was still great. And if you combine 2018, 2017, 2019, he had 318 RBIs total. So, like, he was producing. Was did, producing. Did, did, did we expect him to maybe burst out on the scene like that? I don't think so, but he did. So it's showing that his trajectory is still going upwards. Now, granted, granted, in 2020, obviously he went to the Angels, mm -hmm. had a lower of a year than were expected from Anthony Rendon. Granted, 60 games, got to keep repeating that. And you saw it a little bit in his production, too, kind of lower just a bit because, you know, he doesn't. Yes, he has Mike Trout. Yes, he has Mike Trout. But you, when you look at, like, in Washington, when they had Adam Eaton and Soto and Tur Turner and then him and then Kendrick behind him, who was doing good at that time, mm -hmm. you know, his stats were definitely boosted in that 2019 year because of that. However, in this year, yeah, he was only seventh in home runs 
out of third baseman. Ninth in RBIs, fifth in runs scored. So like, but however, you know, still great on base, leading the league in that. Third in average. Third I don't. You know what? You I, know. It doesn't matter great. to me, bro. Because like, like I just said, you know, I'm always skeptical of people moving to another team. I expect Anthony Rendon to have an incredible year this season uh, with the Angels. I really think he's going to do amazing and get back to that 2019 form. And, you know, last season, too, it's like definitely was not a bad year at all. No, like, no. Four, for his 497 standards. slugging, you know? Can't, yeah. Can't well, complain. It's good. You know, can't that's complain. good for That's good. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, maybe if they, if, if the Angels, I, I, I don't think they have any plans of getting anybody. Uh, batting wise, I mean, if they do, congratulations, because you really do need, I think, just one more. Or you know what, you even need, you need some more depth. You need just some more solid guys. Like I don't understand how they like, have money to do that. Yeah, I'm not sure how they would when you're be paying, capable of doing that. When you're paying Rendon and Trout, I mean, yeah, and I, must, I'm assuming that they like Otani, and I don't know what he's yeah. getting paid or if they need to extend him, or I, I don't know, man. Don't I'm know. not sure about that team. But if they can get it together, then he's going to definitely skyrocket to the number one spot for sure, for sure. Speaking of the number one spot, I like how I said that. I said that very slow and with commas in between. Our number one third baseman coming into 2021 is Nolan Arenado, as I'm sure that you all expected. As I'm sure that you all expected and have heard for years upon years upon I'm going to be honest, and I think a lot of people weren't expecting a number one Arenado. A lot of people know, are man. underrating him this year. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure why. I don't know why. I know, I know why, well, and we both know why, because it's the Coors Field. No, it, that's all it is. It doesn't matter, though. That's it doesn't it matter. Is. Does he still play on Colorado? Yes, he does. And so Coors do- Field is not going anywhere. Yes. Coors Field is not going anywhere. And that is part of it. And, and let's read out his numbers. Let's read out his numbers just to see, like, like guys, don't get us wrong. Like, I know people are going to go, Arenado, call, like, Coors Field, Coors Field. But the fact is, did he do it? Yes, he did. All right? And I'll, I even got numbers to, to, to show how crazy his expected batting average compared to his actual average is. His actual average is way higher than his expected batting average. But he's still doing amazing shit, and you can't really and, well, say anything but, about that. But here's the thing: like, I just I don't think that any of that matters. You know, it's like, why is that? Because because that's part of who he is as a player. Like, Coors Field is something. If it is so clearly a cheat code, then MLB needs to demolish that stadium <laughs> and make it a, a regula- regulation See, the, thing. The thing they can is because they're way high in the air. You, you got to relocate the whole city. It's just <laughs> like realistically, though. He is still playing on Colorado. So even if Coors Field is buffing him, which, you know, based on the expected batting average, potentially it is, he's still there. 50% of the games will be played there, which Mm. means that nothing is going to change, at least this year. If he had been traded, if we had been, we, we moved to another place, someone else signed him, whatever, okay, now we can talk. Yeah. But Coors Field is still a factor. So, you know, we can't sit here and be like, he's only good because of that. Because he still has that. I mean, you look at DJ LeMahieu. People are saying, oh, now he's hitting for power. Well, he also is playing in New York Stadium and he just pulls the ball or or, or puts the ball over the right field fence. Like, you could do a pop-up over there and you hit a home run. That's why he's hitting more home runs. And we saw it against the Toronto, I almost said Maple Leafs, Toronto Blue Jays. That he just would pop it over, no problem, and that's what he did because he's because he's also a smart well, hitter. But and the, and that that is the thing, you know, is like if if Aaron Alano left Colorado, would he still be good? Yeah, of course he'd still be good. You know, it's like and DJ LeMahieu is as a good? great well, but DJ LeMahieu is a great example though. He is a mm-hmm. great example. In fact, he is better. He's better than what he was in Colorado. He just won a batting right. title. That's true. You know, that's true. And, and it's and, like. Here's Maybe a, he goes to New York it, and Arenado gets crazy good too. But here's the thing, Arenado, Arenado is a home run hitter. He's always been. I mean, you you look at like he, the last from 2015 to 2019 when he was a when he was an All Star all throughout those years, five time All Star. Uh, he averaged 40 home runs a season, so he's always been a home run hitter. Mm-hmm. Whereas DJ has not been. He's been just a great contact hitter. Uh, but his home runs increase because of that right field porch. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, Arenado, like. He's amazing. Like I, I want to I break it down. Let, let's put the course field aside and just talk about how great his numbers are. Because he has won a gold glove in every single year yeah, that he's that's played. Yeah, that's messed up. Four-time Silver Slugger, 
third in MVP votes, MVP votes three times, and his career numbers is 293 average. And yeah. he's just he, he and, and, and you're that. labeling him a power hitter, and he's yeah, hitting and 293, 293 career. And here, and here's the thing: even if you you do move him over to, I was gonna say Roger Center, but Roger Center is a great home uh, like average park too. Um, if you move him over to like Boston, let's say, um, he might hit 265, maybe, but he'll still hit 35 to 40 home runs a year. Like it's gonna happen. I, I would put money on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I just realistically, it's like I think all of those things. It's like, like I I don't know, man. I'm so sick of people talking about stuff like that in the sense of like if you did this and that and like if he cut his hair this way and like if the wind was blowing from this perspective, then he might not do that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. He might not, but he is. Man, he's doing you know? it. But he is. It's he's like, doing it in. Yeah, I know. I get you. I see what you're saying. But he's doing it under these factors. And, like, we can't ignore the factors because they're so ridiculous. Like, I was looking up. I wish I would have wrote them down. But uh, Coors Field, like, last year led the league in, like, all the averages for home runs, average home runs per game, average runs scored per game, average arm. Like, they, they, and they dominated. They absolutely dominated. Mm -hmm. And what was the Colorado Rockies record? They were bad because, like, the other teams came in and did the same shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we, I can't ignore that. However, what I also can't ignore is the fact that he's put up unreal numbers consistently his entire career and that i just simply can't yeah and, and that's the thing right it's like like there are other hitters on colorado who are bad who yeah. are bad yeah. you know like <laughs> if if it truly was only the field then everyone on that team should be hitting 300 with 30 home runs mm -hmm. they are not and arenado has been the most consistent has been you know and the field doesn't do anything defensively he is still fucking elite defensively. Yeah, you know, it's that, like that, that doesn't is, change that anything. That doesn't change anything. It's so it's like, yeah, it, he's just crazy and he's been crazy and he's coming off of a down year and I wouldn't worry about it at all. I think yeah. that he is very clearly going to bounce back. Whenever you do something for literally eight years straight and and literally from 25, 2015 to 2019, you have at least 110 RBIs every <laughs> single year. Yeah, I am not concerned. No. I am not concerned. No, he I'm will not. be elite, and that's why he's number one. Okay, guys, that is our top five third basemen coming into 2021 season. What do you guys think about our list? Is there anything that you would move, change, disagree with, agree with? Let us know in the comments down below. How far is Vladdy for you from being a top? I guess five? I need to Ooh. look at all the other third he, basemen in the league. Well, here's the thing. I think he's. If we're being, if we, you know, we did our thing about um, all seasons and stuff, like how many seasons people play and how much they have to prove it. I think he's like three proven seasons away. Like he's got to prove it like three times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we don't have anything like crazy good, like not at this, not at these no. guys' level no, right yeah. now. You he know? needs so. to do, he literally needs to put up probably like two, two solid seasons uh, in MVP conversation. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, exactly. Window yeah. Because I was going to say, it's, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> we don't even have Devers on this. <laughs> Exactly. Like, exactly. So you got to do like two of Devers' seasons, he's and gotta, then maybe we'll talk about it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So like, yeah, he, he's far, far away. Far away like far a lot away. of our guys are far, far away from this conversation, but they have to prove it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. They have to. They have to prove it. These That's guys have proved what it. it is. That's simply what it is. Mm -hmm. Guys, you can check us out on Spotify, Breaker, Anchor, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. Also, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification button. Instagram, follow us there. Always popping off. And Patreon, please become a Patreon member. Shout out and thank you to everyone part of the community once again. And thank you guys so much for watching. And go Jays, go.